The speeding ticket, 14-day rule. Does the 14-day rule serve as a legitimate option for avoiding a speeding penalty, or is it a misinterpreted legal guideline that falls short of its benefits? Let's take a look at the 14-day rule so you can fully understand what it means and how it might apply to you. What is the 14-day rule? The 14-day rule is a specific provision in UK traffic law regarding speeding fines, particularly outlined in Section 1 of the Road Traffic Offenders Act 1998. This rule stipulates that a notice of intended prosecution, NIP, must be received by the registered keeper of the vehicle within 14 days following the alleged speeding offence. It's crucial to note that this rule applies to various scenarios. Fixed cameras. If you've been caught speeding by fixed cameras such as HADECS, Highways Agency Digital Enforcement Camera System, or GATSOS, speed cameras that use radar technology, the 14-day rule is applicable. These cameras automatically record the speeding offence and generate a NIP that is sent to the registered keeper of the vehicle. Manned cameras. The rule also applies to offences detected by manned cameras, like laser devices. In these instances, if the police didn't stop you at the time of the alleged offence, a NIP is required to be sent within the 14-day window. Verbal NIPs. If a driver is stopped by the police at the time of the offence, a verbal warning or NIP should be given. In this case, the 14-day rule doesn't apply because the notice is immediate. The fine print. While the 14-day rule sounds straightforward, there are nuances that you must understand. The law states that the NIP must be served to the registered keeper within 14 days. This means that just posting the NIP within this time frame is not sufficient. The notice must actually arrive at the address of the registered keeper within the 14-day period for it to be valid. If it arrives even a day late, you may have grounds to go to court to challenge its validity, although there are exceptions and caveats to consider, which we will explore later in this post. By understanding the 14-day rule in its full context, you can better navigate the complexities of traffic law and make informed decisions should you find yourself facing a speeding ticket. Why might a speeding ticket arrive late? If you receive a notice of intended prosecution, NIP, that has arrived outside the 14-day window, you might be wondering whether it's valid. However, it's important to understand the reasons why a NIP might arrive late. Incorrect address. One of the most common reasons for a delayed NIP is an incorrect address. If you've moved house recently or your vehicle is registered to a previous address, the NIP will be sent there first. This can cause significant delays, especially if the current occupants are slow to forward your mail. Change in vehicle ownership. If you've recently purchased a second-hand vehicle, there's a chance the NIP could be sent to the previous owner first. The same applies if you've sold your vehicle, the NIP may arrive at your address, even though you're no longer the registered keeper. Leased or hired vehicles. For leased or hired vehicles, the NIP is typically sent to the leasing or hiring company first. They will then nominate you as the driver, and a new NIP will be issued in your name, which can take additional time to arrive. Nomination of a different driver if you're not the registered keeper of the vehicle, the NIP may initially be sent to the registered keeper, who will then have to nominate you as the driver responsible for the offence. This process can add extra days or even weeks to the time it takes for you to receive the NIP. Legal presumptions and excuses Even if a NIP is posted within the 14-day window, this doesn't automatically mean it will be considered on time. The law makes certain presumptions about the delivery of post, and these can impact the validity of a NIP. Business days. There's a legal presumption that a NIP is deemed to have been served two business days after it was posted. This means that if a NIP was posted on a Thursday, it would normally be considered served by the following Monday, assuming no bank holidays interfere. Weekends and bank holidays Weekends and bank holidays aren't counted as business days. This is particularly relevant if a NIP is posted just before a long weekend or a holiday period like Christmas. In such cases, the NIP may be considered invalid if it couldn't reasonably have been expected to arrive within the 14-day window. REASONABLE, expectation. The law considers what would have been a reasonable time for the NIP to arrive. If it's deemed that the NIP could reasonably have been expected to arrive within the 14-day period based on the date it was posted, then it may still be valid, even if it arrives late. Understanding these nuances is crucial if you're considering challenging a speeding ticket based on the 14-day rule. While the rule offers a potential avenue for avoiding a fine or penalty for points on your license, 
it's not a guaranteed escape route and comes with its own set of complexities, limitations, and cost implications to challenge before court. What if the delay wasn't your fault? You might think that if the delay in receiving the NIP was due to circumstances entirely beyond your control, you'd be exempt from the fine and penalty points. However, this is not necessarily the case. Postal strikes and lost mail. For instance, if there was a postal strike or your letter was lost in the mail, it doesn't mean you'll be exempt. The law focuses on whether the police officer acted correctly and in a timely manner in issuing the NIP. If they posted it within the time frame that would ordinarily allow it to arrive within 14 days, then you're still liable for the fine and penalty points. Acts of God even in extraordinary circumstances, such as natural disasters affecting postal services, the focus remains on whether the police fulfilled their obligations in issuing the NIP. If they did, you're generally still liable. Caveats and limitations The 14-day rule may seem like a silver bullet for avoiding a speeding ticket, but it's essential to understand its limitations and the caveats that apply. Registered keeper versus driver. The 14-day rule applies to the registered keeper of the vehicle, not necessarily the driver at the time of the offense. If you're not the registered keeper, the NIP may be sent to the actual registered keeper first, who will then nominate you, adding more time to the process. Reasonable expectation. The law operates on what could reasonably be expected in terms of the NIP's arrival. If it's deemed reasonable that the NIP could have arrived within the 14-day window, even if it didn't, the notice may still be valid. Business days. Remember, the law presumes that a NIP is served two business days after posting. Weekends and bank holidays are not counted, which can extend the 14-day period in practice. Legal advice. If you're considering challenging a NIP based on the 14-day rule, it's strongly advised to seek legal advice. The nuances of the law can be complex. And professional assistance can guide you through the process more effectively. By understanding these caveats and limitations, you can make a more informed decision about whether to challenge a speeding ticket based on the 14-day rule. While it offers a potential avenue for avoiding a fine, it's far from a guaranteed escape and should be approached with caution and a full understanding of the law.